Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, Mercedes marks 100 successful drone deliveries in Zurich. Alpa highlights FAA study underscoring danger from unsafe UAS. And Air Force selects Tyndall Air Force Base as preferred location for new RPA unit. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. In a global first, online orders were delivered in Zurich between September 25th and October 13th with the aid of vans and drones. Mercedes-Benz carried out a unique pilot project to test on-demand delivery of e-commerce orders, and it was a resounding success. On 10 days, a total of around 100 flights were made without incident over the city of Zurich. The project made use of two drones and two Mercedes-Benz Vito vans with the integrated landing platforms. Technology installed on the vehicle roofs ensure the landings were accurate and safe. The main objective for the project team was to test the processes and procedures required to operate a delivery system of this kind and to learn from practical experience. The results of the trials are currently being analyzed in depth. We are convinced that the project will evolve rapidly. We see great potential for our solution and intend to expand it to include further areas of application. Notice Stefan Marr, head of future transportation at Mercedes-Benz Vans. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. ESA is considering extending its activities to a new region of the sky via a novel type of aerial vehicle, a missing link between drones and satellites. High-altitude pseudo-satellites, or HAPs, are platforms that float or fly at high altitude like conventional aircraft but operate more like satellites, except that rather than working from space, they can remain in position inside the atmosphere for weeks or even months, offering continuous coverage of the territory below. Copters will be the exclusive supplier of UAS and accompanying technologies for the United Kingdom's Devon and Cornwall Police and Dorset Police. The force announced earlier this year that it will employ full-time UAS pilots and create a dedicated UAS unit. As a result of this partnership, the force will expand its fleet of UAS technology in the upcoming months, as it plans on purchasing a variety of specialist UAS that are equipped with optical zoom and thermal imaging capabilities. Amazon has received a UAS patent for a self-destructing delivery drone that is designed to break up in flight in the event of a power failure. The idea is to prevent a heavy drone from causing damage or injury should the aircraft experience a power failure or other in-flight emergency. The patent is for directed fragmentation for unmanned airborne vehicles. The patent abstract describes a UAV consisting of various components, such one or more motors, batteries, sensors, a housing, casing or shell, and a payload for delivery. The House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee's Aviation Subcommittee held a hearing last week to consider technological, legal and policy issues related to the use and integration of unmanned aircraft systems at the National Airspace System. During his testimony, AUVSI President and CEO Brian Wynn said the United States is at the dawn of a new American renaissance in technology, one that deserves continued government attention and support. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Following the release of an FAA-directed study showing that unmanned aircraft systems may damage aircraft more than bird strikes during collisions, Captain Tim Canole, president of the Airlines Pilots Association International, renewed the union's call for Congress to give the FAA the authority to regulate hobby drones. Though the narrative he invokes is not altogether correct nor firmly verified. Canole claims that in 2012, Congress told the FAA it could not create or put into effect any new safety regulations for unmanned aircraft that are operated as models or as a hobby. Congress must change this law and allow the FAA to apply safety rules to all types of UAS operations. 
Policy and regulations must require operators to understand how to fly UAS safely. Individuals who fly UAS for recreation must be required to keep the aircraft within sight, so they know where it is located and where it is heading. In addition, authorities must possess the tools to identify and track UAS operators who don't conform to the rules, so that authorities can protect air travelers and shippers. The Air Force has selected Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida as the preferred location for hosting a new MQ-9 Reaper wing with 24 remotely piloted aircraft. Vanderbilt Air Force Base, California is considered a reasonable alternative. The wing will be composed of an operations group with mission control elements, as well as a launch and recovery capability and a maintenance group. We selected Tyndall Air Force Base because it was the best location to meet the unique requirements of the MQ-9 Reaper, says Secretary of the Air Force Heather Wilson. That includes fewer aircraft competing for airspace, nearby training ranges, great weather, and lower upfront cost, Wilson added. The Air Force previously announced Shaw Air Force Base, South Carolina, as the preferred alternative for an operations group with mission control elements. The operations group will have no aircraft assigned. Tyndall Air Force Base remains the preferred alternative for this basing action. The final basing decision will be made by the Secretary of the Air Force only after the environmental analysis is complete. Based on current projections, airmen are expected to begin arriving at the new location as early as 2020. The first aircraft are expected to arrive in 2022. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.